Olava, can you explain to us what cultural appropriation is? <gasps> is? That's a tough one. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me, Bergson? I'm gonna yeah. try, I'm gonna try. So, okay, cultural appropriation is the opposite of cultural exchange, okay? Cultural exchange, exchange is when two cultures meet at a level of equality and people share their ideas, share their cultural uh, uh, artifacts. It could be literature, it could be poetry, it could be music, it could be ways of dressing, and they do so on an equal level. Cultural appropriation is when you have one dominant culture or one dominant group that in relation to a marginalized group is taking from the other group in a way that is not fair, in a kind of stealing. Appropriation is sort of making something your own that is not yours to do so. So when are things unequal? When are we having two groups that are in an unequal position with one another? In in Europe, you can see this, for example, in the ways that uh, certain cultural expressions uh, of clothing, for example, are considered, when done by black people, when done by brown people, are considered not really interesting, not, not really like beautiful. But when white women do it or something in a new Vogue or a new designer decides to braid the uh, model's hair, it's like, whoa, this is a new thing. No one's ever done this before. It's amazing. Let's clap and let's give this person a lot of money. While the communities that have innovated, created those cultural practices are like looked down upon for doing those things, right? The key thing to remember is, is what are the relationships between the two groups of exchange and who's taking what from who, in what way and who benefits afterwards. And why is it hurtful if um if a white girl decides that uh, braids or dreads are something they should do and why could that be hurtful for people of color? Yeah, well I think specifically, for example, certain types of braids, certain types of, uh, uh, you have for example rastas, right? You have like uh, dreads, but you have also like uh, uh, certain types of braids from West Africa. Look, there's a lot of history with these methods of braiding your hair. There's a lot of, uh, uh, and there's also specific uh, spiritual context, like dreads for people who are, for example, ascribing to Rastafarian religion, they have a very specific religious and spiritual context. If you're just doing it because you think it's fashionable and hip and cool, and you do not take into account that history and that tra those traditions, those spiritual traditions, you are really doing something that is inappropriate, that is one. But you also have to keep in mind that, for example, dreads can be a reason for black people not to get a job, for example. They can be a reason for black people to be targeted by the police. They can be a reason for, for example, neighbors to uh, not want someone to come and live. They can be a reason for black people to be marginalized. If you as a white person gets to do it without, you know, like sort of, any cultural or spiritual uh, uh, context, but also without having to feel the 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 um, how do you say the the negative effects of wearing your hair that way, you're doing something inappropriate, right? Um, so that's with dreads, for example, in a, a, one thing. But with other types of braids, like you have to understand that a lot of these types of West African the, uh, uh, protect uh, styles are protective styles. They're literally designed for our hair that has a different kind of way of relating to wind and weather conditions, we're using it to protect our hair. And then you see these white women who have no need for that protection at all, use it in a way that makes them seem hip and cool while we're not getting jobs at the same time and while we actually need the protection. We can't do without. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I've loved Olave Explains. I had a lot of fun. We've been at it uh, for <laughs> quite a long time. And I want to do more Olave Explains uh, episodes. But then I need questions. I need to know what it is that you want me to explain to you to the best of my abilities. And uh, you can do so by sending us an email at olavetalks at gmail.com and I will try to explain it to you the best I can. Thank you.